PCSing to Hawaii. Sounds like paradise, right? Perfect duty station, especially compared to Fort Polk, Drum, all the ones in Alaska, all right? Who wouldn't love being in Hawaii? Endless beaches, endless summer, tropical paradise, Mai Tais. Now, I don't like it when my kids complain. Stop whining. Your kids are soft. You lack discipline. But I've got news for you. You are mine now. You belong to me. But I think as a YouTuber, I should every once in a while level up with you guys and be honest. What life truly is like living on this island, especially being stationed here for three or four years. It would be so easy for you guys to watch my channel and all you get out of it is this is amazing, I want to go there, life is great, right? So you might be thinking, what do you have to complain? You live in paradise. And I agree. But that is not always the case. Hawaii is more like a foreign country than in other states. Heavily influenced by Asian cultures and the plantation generation. This is probably going to be not like any other duty station you've been to. And for that reason, we're gonna take a step back, re-level set, and show you guys a part of Hawaii that isn't talked about too often. Because living on Hawaii isn't all cupcakes and rainbows. It is rainbow. Now, quick disclaimer. The information in this video is all from my personal experience and those, the research that I have done. This is also based off of prices in August and July of 2022. And of course, things are gonna be slightly different for different people, depending on lots of factors. So keep that in mind. Five on our list, counting down the facilities. You live on an island, you're not gonna get a whole lot of things, but Schofield Barracks in particular, I think is pretty low budget. They just don't have the same kind of budget to update their facilities. And I think as the base has gotten older, you now have a bigger issue with that, mostly coming from the power issues. Lost power again. I myself have been in and out of power quite a bit. I've never lost power as often as I do on this base. This whole weekend, we have a scheduled power outage from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. both Saturday and again on Sunday. I actually really regret not bringing my solar generator that I had on our van trip last year. Nowhere else between Maine, California, I haven't lost power like I have here. This thing looks like it's out of a zombie apocalypse video. Facilities on this base are pretty old and I'm specific to Schofield, but you could also argue for Pearl Harbor and a couple others. Some of them are quaint, historic homes. Some of these schools look like they're internment camps. I'm not joking. They look pretty, pretty run down, pretty sketchy. And the nicest one is the Solomon Elementary School. It's probably the newest one. Daniel K doesn't look too bad, but as soon as you go off base, they, they look like they're literally hanging on by a nail. Maybe two nails. That's no laughing matter. There's a lot of people out here that, when you think about it, you're paying $3,000 a month for your base housing on average. $3,000, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. If you're off base, you might also still be having power issues. Your house saver options are more of your apartment style and while they're gonna save you maybe $600, they only do that the first year, and then after the first year, they go up to full BAH. At least that's what they are doing currently. On top of that, they are known to flood and have enormous issues because these are some of the older homes on Schofield.
Bailey is over there chasing birds. Doesn't she know we need to be serious working on this video? So number four, you live on an island. <laughs> There's no such thing as a road trip on this base. You could pretty much spend three hours and drive around the whole island. And before you know it, you're looking out into the abyss and there's nothing out there. Literally Hawaii is farther away from any other landmass than anything else in the world. Fact. It can feel like after a while, some people get really tired of the beach. There's only so much to do. It's not like you can go on a road trip Yes, there's camping, yes, there's a few things, but eventually you're going to have done it. And many people, after spending a year here, start to feel like, like I've kind of been there and done that, and they're ready to move on. They count down to when their next PCS is, and they're excited to move back to places like Texas and Kentucky. Come on, Haley. Your third most important reason, you are as far away from your family that you will probably ever be. And I'm grandma. Now I'm kind of, of course, you could be like Europe and Italy are kind of in the same boat, but. For people with young kids, especially infants, you know, moms, you know, the spouse may be constantly out training, constantly gone you really rely on a lot of that family support and you're just unfortunately you're not going to get it in hawaii you're not i mean one quick short hike and you're at the end of the island everyone says that they want to come visit you i mean who wouldn't want to come to vacation in hawaii visit their family but the reality is is that more than likely they're not going to be able to come visit you and you're probably not going to be able to go visit them there are many people here that really suffer from depression and get what's called island fever. And you can get island fever without necessarily de de actual depression, but it's something that should be taken seriously. There are many people out there who would like to be closer to family and who this is going to impact more than others per se. Now, we're so far. Let's talk about the second biggest reason you may not want to move PCS to Hawaii. You know one of my favorite movies is Christmas Vacation. <sighs> oh. Clark, what's wrong? Just something about this duty station, for some reason or another, uh, the finance department, paperwork part of it is just... Ah! That this base, worse, I guess, than any other duty station. That's what we've been told over and over again, and we've lived it. Maybe you could argue that it's user error and not filling out the right forms or whatever it may be, but the, I don't know the actual percentage but I guarantee it's probably like one in four families are going to face pay issues while on this island. It's gonna get messed up. Your BAH, your BAS, your COLA, one of those three, if not all of those three, are gonna be potentially be messed up while being here. There are people where it takes six months for their BAH to update. Meanwhile, you know, you're living in Hawaii, it's expensive, you are sucking out and people who have never struggled before financially come here and they struggle. And then when you add that piece in to where for some reason, you know, the piece of paper gets lost, the paperwork you turned in doesn't go through, it gets denied, there's an error, there's a mistake, you didn't fill in the right signature, you didn't go to this right department, whatever it may be, the excuse that the financial department gives you or S1 or whatever it may be, there is a great majority of people, families, who are going to go months without getting the proper pay. And I want to look them straight in the eye, and I want to tell them what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four-flushing, low-life, snake-licking, dirt-eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood... 
sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? John and I have been on island for four months now, and we are still waiting for our cola to be adjusted and for our, uh, our our BAS to go from single and barracks to married couple. TLA was, was difficult, but there was a lot of information. We followed the steps. It was a just horrific process of getting all of the documents in order to get TLA, but that eventually came through on the timeline that they said that it would. That's just a fact of life. That's what's going on. It should not be months that you are facing this issue, but it is. That is the reality for this space. And I don't know if it's, you know, across army wide, maybe you could argue that it is, but everyone who comes here says it is worse here. It is worse than anywhere else everyone says when it comes to the paperwork side of the army. And that leads me into the top reason you may not want to PCS here. Absolutely miserable. And his cost of living, it's really probably no surprise, right? We've kind of built up to this and talked about this, but let's hit cost of living. Hawaii is the most expensive state in the United States. All right, just wrapped up another shopping trip. So on average, you guys, we spend <laughs> we spend an average of $700 a month just on groceries from the commissary. That's not including really anything else. And that's just, you know, I would say we're not starving. Obviously not starving. We're, we're doing okay. That's not buying everything that I would like to buy. Um, and it's not what we used to buy. And I think most people could say that across the nation. But... You know, when bananas are, you know, what are they? They were, I think, a dollar something per pound. You know, apples, a couple dollars per pound. You know, a gallon of milk is $5.60, and that's the cheapest on the commissary. You know, and then if you go off post, let's, let's take a tour off post. So Safeway is probably going to be your most expensive. So we'll just show you the, the extreme of expensive. That's probably gonna cost you six or seven dollars for a gallon of milk. That's the cheapest one. We're not talking organic people, we're not talking fancy, like potentially off-brand, literally looking around the cheapest. It is incredibly expensive. Forget New York, forget California, they've got nothing. Okay, so start to like think about, okay, so you get cost of living adjustment and there's a calculator online. I'll link that down below of what you would potentially qualify for. Let's talk about the power bill, people. Okay, power bill. Living on base, we get a mock bill. And part of that mock bill kind of gives you an idea of the cost of electricity. I mean, obviously you're supposed to stay in it. They just send you a mock bill. I, for certain, would never be able to afford living off post. Um, the average cost, I'm gonna throw up a screenshot of the average cost that Hawaii gives us the cost of electricity here. A good way for you guys to figure out what your cost might be would be to see your current power bill, how many kilowatts per hour you use a month, and then times that by the actual cost that it would be in Hawaii. You're probably gonna be using more AC when you get here. Yes, I don't use AC, but I am the exception to many of the military families and military wives around here. Here you go, here's a mock bill that you potentially would get in living in base housing, but it shows you kind of what you might be paying. All right, so electricity per kilowatt hour. All right, so my usage was 608 kilowatt hours and I came out to $186. Right, again, that is no AC. Their baseline, the average, bring it in here, the average is 1300 kilowatt hours. And the average is $400. So if you live off base. What is that electricity bill gonna look like? That electricity bill, from what people have said online, they average 400 to $600 per month. That is what electricity could potentially cost you off post.
So now you're starting to like get a sense for what cost of living out here really matters. Some things are not that much more money. Some things are only a few cents more. But you apply that logic to everything and then it gets very expensive. Work on your vehicle, getting your nails done. Furniture's gonna be more expensive. Even used cars, two brand new cars, those are gonna be more expensive. Going out, it's gonna be obviously more expensive. Going to the salon, all of that extra money. So many people come out here assuming, oh, we get cold, we get cost of living adjustments, we're gonna be fine. And the reality is, is I don't know if that cost of living adjustment really covers everything. I really feel like that cost of living adjustment only works enough for the difference in food costs, right? Because there are people out there who have said that they've come from Texas and you know North Carolina, Kentucky, and they've said that then in the past they have paid maybe you know two hundred to three hundred dollars a month on food, and then when they get here, now all of a sudden it's. 700, 800, and it goes up. Many spouses have to get extra jobs. They'll do everything from Uber, they'll rent their car on Turo, um, you know, all, all kinds of things. And while you may think, okay, I can do that, maybe you have a young child and you need daycare. Well, the daycare waiting list on the affordable daycare options, right? These are the affordable ones. Those are going to have a six month waiting list. So again, those first six months, those first six months are going to be <sighs> in the first week that John and I arrived in Hawaii, or actually the girls and I arrived in Hawaii, you know, we were in the hotel. We had to eat out a lot and we were just tired of <laughs> eating ramen. So we went out and we were like, let's go get some, let's go get some chicken. We can do this, right? We went to Popeye's. There's Popeye's on base. $76. Fast food for a family of four. Adventure! California! 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 <laughs> this is not California, this is Hawaii. Kids say Hawaii! 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 Alright, so we've talked a lot about the big reasons. Here are some bonus reasons for you guys, some small little tidbits that you might want to consider before you agree to PCSing out here. And who knows, maybe you actually don't have a choice, right? John and I, this was it, baby. We're going to Hawaii and we're making the best of it. Uh, bugs on the island are pretty bad, even so much that you will find them even in your cereal. Not saying that there are no bugs in other parts of the country. But I think most people here or have been stationed here would argue there's just a sheer volume that you're, just, you're never gonna experience the volume that you would hear in other places. You can literally walk out to any field, stand still for a second and just look and then start to see the grass crawl with cockroaches. Any field. So another thing you guys may be thinking that you could probably just order a lot of stuff through Amazon, get it shipped out. And the fact of the matter is, not only are you gonna have just a longer shipping time, it's definitely not gonna be two days. You'd be lucky if you can get it in five days. But there are just gonna be things that flat out they're not gonna ship to Hawaii. And that includes all of those subscription food boxes. One of the ones that I really liked was the butcher box. No, nope, not shipping to Hawaii. A lot of things are just not, you're not gonna get in Hawaii. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give me a thumbs up. It really does help me out. But the main thing I want you guys to think about is after all of that, I still love being in Hawaii. Now, you could argue I've only been here for five months now. I'm still in my honeymoon phase. I love the people. I love the ocean, everything about it. But if I were knowing these things, if I were to say, yes, I'm gonna do this again, I would say, yes, I'm going to do this again. I wanna to come to Hawaii and I love it here. But maybe those top five reasons they mean something more to you 
maybe you're at a point where you're not ready to increase your monthly budget by a thousand dollars you know those are important things to consider you are getting hot 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 for wondering where we are we're hiking back from Canna Point didn't quite make the point hopefully we do this video I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys later. Mahalo.